Hello, one and all. It is a beautiful night here in Manville, New Jersey, and we want to thank you all for tuning in for this night of Combat Fights Unlimited action. We have six great matches lined up for you with 12 fighters. We're going to throw down inside of this steel cage. Alyssa Moreno here alongside Johnny Torres bringing down some of the action you'll be seeing tonight at Combat Fights Unlimited Fight Mode, Slamovich versus Blaine. We have major returns in the form of Notorious Mimi, an original who competed in the first Shoot to Thrill tournament at CFU's first ever event, Johnny. Yeah, and you know, she has a powerful pedigree under her belt. That's been in NXT down in Florida. All the time she spent at the Monster Factory. And it was in that history of training at the Monster Factory alongside her opponent tonight. And the mysterious CFU newcomer, Salem, looks to us for the return of Notorious Me. But moving on to a highly anticipated matchup that was making the rounds on social media, Kylan King versus Alice Inc. Yeah, top flight competition here. And this is really any a light. Anything could happen here. This is a match you'll only ever find occurring under the CFU banner. Alice making a CFU and United States debut all in one night. Kylan King, you know her from the Impact Knockout scene, along with making a name across the country and around the world. No doubt about that. Both furious, lethal strikers, both known to use the extension and that lower body power. I can't wait to see what kind of tits both ladies are going to uncork here. Two tick kickboxing taekwondo experts. Oh, why? I can't wait to see. Gonna be a great one. And also on tap for tonight, we have CFU newcomers Kimberly Spirit and Riley Crow crossing paths inside the cage. Yeah, you know, a pair of debuts on tap with Kimberly Spirit and Riley Crow. You gotta, you gotta believe the first impression is the most powerful for so many combatants. This could be the ticket back to the CFU cage for a second bout for either one. Who's gonna make the first mistake? You got also Ashley Buchanan colliding with Erica Torres. No relation, right? No relation at all. Uh, Erica Torres uh, carrying the flag of Joe Daddy Stevenson and Melvin Goward. You have to believe that she has a mix of both power in her hands and pedigree on the mat. I'm looking forward to seeing that styles clash. Plus, we have Christina Marie returning to Combat Fights Unlimited to face Brittany Blake. Uh, that's going to be a, a battle of power there. Both ladies carry a gratuitous amount of strength. Christina Marie, no shortage of power. And Brittany Blake, an endless amount of experience and grit. And of course, in our main event, rarefied air here in the Manville Elk Lodge. And again, we want to thank them so much for hosting us here tonight. It is Slamovich defending the CFU Championship against Jordan Blade, Johnny. Literally, there has been only one here in CFU, Masha Slamovich, the first and only CFU undisputed champion, as undisputed as undisputed gets. Took the championship against Janai Kai back at Rise of a Champion, and since then has defended it successfully against the likes of La Problema, Marina Shafir, Akira, and her opponent tonight, Jordan Blade. Yeah, we saw Jordan was unable to dethrone Slamovich at last year's cage combat, but she's got to be having it in her mind. What is she going to do tonight to make it a different story? It is an incredible night of action here at CFU. It's all heading your way. Let's see how it all shakes out right now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Blake Chadwick, here to explain the rules of combat for CFU. Matches will be contested under the rounds format, consisting of three three-minute rounds. A one-minute rest period will occur between rounds. Matches can be won via knockout, submission, or referee stoppage only. Matches cannot be won via pinfall. If no winner has emerged after three rounds, the match will be determined by a panel of three judges who will be watching from cage side. That's all from us here at CFU. Now, let's get ready for combat. Welcome to Combat Fights Unlimited, Fight Night 2. Slamovich versus Blade 2. Oh, yeah. So, if you come up and sit in the direction of my right, our judges here tonight, we have 
have Travis Jacobs, Michael Collins, and Taylor Kelly. They will be scoring the fights here tonight, which are three rounds, and each are three minutes long. All right, so who's ready for our first matchup here of the night? Huge thank you to Samira setting the stage, setting the cage here for us at Slamovich versus Blade 2. And an unbelievable bout waiting in the wings. Stepping into the CFU cage with a self-described fighting style of optimistic. Torres, how do you think that that's going to fare against someone with the grit and determination of Riley Crow? Uh, you got to be optimistic stepping into the CFU cage for the first time. That's a pretty good fighting style to be, you know, uh, uh, hailing under. All in that power yeah. of positivity, but what about the power of power? Actually, the power of strange. Courageous birds walk into the CFU cage tonight. Not only the differences in fighting style, you have a top-notch striker like Riley Crow, you have an optimist like Kim Spirit, but you also have such different personalities. Riley Crow is someone that is cocky, that has one hell of an attitude, whereas Kim Spirit is just, she's so plucky. She's such a go-getter. Firstly, our tail of the tape, and we noticed the unique measurement scale for Kimberly Spirit. Four Pikachus in height, six and a half Magic Carps in weight, hailing from Lavender Town. And even though she fights as an optimist, hailing from Lavender Town, that's a very death-filled town. Yeah, I, I might need a little bit more uh, on that. I was just trying to figure out the conversion rates of Pokemon and actual weight and height here, but it looks like Riley Crow coming out of the gate with that early control. Yeah, looking to settle in right away. It looks like a Buffalo Sleeper. Is grinding away at Kimberly's spirit. Wise to be trying to not let this escape the first round, looking immediately for the submission finish. No doubt about it. I think it was Riley was already howling, telling Kimberly to, to tap out already, but Kim's spirit now showing that spirit. Yes, indeed, raining down the rights. A up kick out of Riley Pro. No shortage of grit being shown in our opening moments here in our opening contest. Yeah, we talked about that signature striking prowess of Riley Crow. Now a shin right to look at the bridge of the nose of Kim Spirit. The Toshiaki Kawada flavor in those kicks, but Kim Spirit not backing down, raining down the rights in punches once again. And that's exactly what Kimberly Spirit has to do when you know you have someone that may not always play the most fair. We are under CFU rules here, but there is a lot that Riley Crow could use to her advantage inside of the cage. Yeah, I noticed did not list, list grappling on her tail of the tape, but laying it down, laying a clinic down right now. Kim Spirit looking to scramble her way out. And manages to force some, some distance between herself and Riley Crow. Now Kim Spirit wrenching on the wrist, trying to gain some control back, trying to get her foot on the gas pedal here. Indeed, might have been thinking about the top wrist lock settling into the hamper lock. Kim Spirit has found success in letting those hands go in this first round so far. And it is leaving Riley Crow smushed up against that chain link of the cage, but that's all Crow needs is just that moment, that split second, and shifts fortune back into her favor. Now that short elbow, bridge of the nose, now grinding Kim against the cage and reining in the kicks, but again, Kim letting those hands go. 
showing that optimism on full display here but oh clocked just the side of the chin and we are under a minute here in our first round at this point does it feel like kim spirit just has to weather the storm yeah, no doubt about it. And the same could be see said er uh, earlier for Riley Crow using that striking pedigree, the defensive side of it this time. And now utilizing a grappling advantage thus far under a scarf fold. And Crow, too, a, a reminder that we are not under pro wrestling rules. There are no shoulders to the mat that are going to make a difference. But wrenching the hair of Riley Crow could be keeping Kim's spirit alive. Yeah. Stopping Riley Crow from getting the full momentum, the, the, the most out of that submission predicament. Closing moments of the first round. I mean, Torres, at this point, who would you give this first round to if we have to now break it down? You know, in terms of shifting phases, Riley Crow was the aggressor in the constant takedowns, but Kim's spirit letting those hands go. It depends somewhat on the judges critique scales what they go by if positioning is paramount for them riley crow 10 9. if damage and letting the hands go and connecting with successful strikes means more that it could be kim spirit 10 9. but we can't above all else let this go to the judges and both combatants know it there's no doubt about that. And you got to imagine that that's going through the mind. Some newer faces to Combat Fights Unlimited. And, and you had said it before, it's all about this one opportunity to make a, a first impression here. And you want it to be a strong one. As now we get ready to kick off our second round of action in our opening contest. Crow and Spirit. Oh, barreling through right away. Ready. But Kim Spirit was, was ready to meet Riley Crow. Yeah, absolutely. The situation of the bowl and the matador. And now Riley Crow letting those hands go, the short rights. Yeah, and Crow has been the aggressor from the get. You saw barreling straight, almost trying to go through her opponent, and now battering down the midsection of Kim Spirit, trying to break the spirit. Eventually uh, break the liver as well. And now looking to assert a positional advantage, might be thinking about the full mount opting. He pulled to that right arm as well as a handful of hair. That's just showing what Kim Spirit can do. Even Oh, wow. Able to catch the kick and now trips up Crow. Takes her off her feet, steps through, and now straight shots to the jaw of the strangest bird. Kimberly Spirit not looking for submission situations here. Opt in to just keep letting those hands go. She wants the knockout. Now Riley. Riley asking for a, a, a tap and... Kim, I, I thought for a second her hand was hovering, but instead she's just trying to get a little more offense in right between the shoulder blades of Riley Crow. Riley Crow trying to get the most out of that guillotine, that front chancery, now driving the knees home. And this is something too. Crow looking to also wear down the air supply with that guillotine hold and now just going right back in with the shots. Oh, high kick, and that, that's it! Wow, just like that. Riley Crow with a knockout blow delivered. Let's take us back here, Torres. You saw that kick connect right to the temple of Kim Spirit. Yeah, Mirko Krokop is smiling all the way from Croatia. And Riley Crow may be smiling here. Standing tall with her second Philly mic. Victorious here in our CFU fight night. Emovich versus Blade too. Riley Crow, I mean, you've got to imagine this is a victory that is going to go straight to her head. Straight to her head, and it could be a ticket straight to the top. You know, I think you already forecasted it. She's uh, already taken the time to gloat. 1-0, and oh, a powerful first step here at Combat Fights Unlimited. But it's just the first step. I'm looking forward to seeing what the future has in store for Riley Crow. Certainly an attitude, determination, overall snarkiness. Third, Riley Crow, the strangest bird well tonight at Combat Fights Unlimited. Uh, Riley Crow, though, not, not opting to fly back to Allentown just yet. She's going to soak it in here in Manville. Already a quick fan favorite, I say as sarcastically as possible, as <laughs> action continues at CFU. One more bow. 
for her adoring public and fulfilling my side of the sarcasm quota. Now this matchup is one that I found so incredibly interesting. These are two uh, opponents, first time ever crossing paths, but uh, one that I have some familiarity with on, on both sides of this equation and uh, really excited to see them cross paths here at CFU. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a new side practitioner. She stands six feet tall, weighing in at 175 pounds, Fighting out of the Berkshire Mountains, making her CFU debut, the Divine Technician, Ashley Buchanan. Ashley Buchanan, a, a local trained at the Worldwide Dojo in Philadelphia under the likes of Cheeseburger, and it has grown so much over the course of her career. Just debuted in 2021 and uh, has really been coming leaps and bounds. Very excited to see this matchup between herself and Erica Torres. Absolutely. The one discipline that Ashley Buchanan claims is the one that Erica Torres does not, but every other discipline seemingly Erica Torres has under her belt. Now, Erica Torres is someone that I had actually crossed paths with down in Florida and saw her in more of the pro wrestling environment. Uh, but this is a totally different ball game. This is coming back to the roots of Erica Torres, the MMA fighter at heart. Someone that wants to beat people up and throw them around. And that is exactly what she seeks to do. You can see here the breakdown, the Muay Thai style of Ashley Buchanan against the MMA background of Erica Torres. But we got to give the, the mass and the height advantage to Buchanan, but it is Torres with that experience edge. Absolutely. And Erica Torres sat under the learning tree of Joe Daddy Stevenson, who frequently and hit throughout his MMA career was the shorter combatant in his fight. No doubt about that. He's definitely sat under some incredible learning trees. Also has accolades on accolades. As an Olympic style wrestler, has held multiple championships, has Erica Torres and looks to really put her money where her mouth is here in the cage at CFU already that quick grounding of Ashley Buchanan. Absolutely. And this is a difficult uh, nut to crack for Ashley Buchanan because we Thai practitioners prefer to have their opponents up close for elbows and knees primarily. But that also puts you right in Erica Torres's wheelhouse. You know, you're within route reach of a single leg takedown. But Ashley Buchanan now, maybe a Muay Thai specialist, but seemingly very comfortable on the campus. Comfortable on the canvas, but you also got to imagine too, these are competitors that are used to the pro wrestling uh, spectrum. You saw Ashley Buchanan forcing down the shoulders of Erica Torres. That's not going to result in a three count here at CFU under CFU. We're looking for, for knockout. We're looking for TKO. We're looking for submission. That is the way to take home a victory. But now trying to lock those claws and we are we are struggling here on the canvas yes absolutely ashley buchanan might be fighting for a triangle erica torres has been through a multitude of triangle choke defense drills and now utilizing the cage and this is going to be a difference maker for erica torres is utilizing the cage to her advantage now it does it on a regular basis throughout mma training ashley buchanan might be the first foray into a cage and certainly you can see Erica Torres just so laser focused. You can see now trying to put some damage on the, the rib key, trying to compromise the ability for Ashley Buchanan to draw breath. Oh, see, there we are. Nice roll. 
reversal of the situation out of Ashley Buchanan, a divine technician indeed. But, Eric Torres not saying put. Just under a minute left in the first round. Our second match in this fight night at CFU and the hammers, the elbows are coming down from Torres. Buchanan's got the blocks up. I'm not sure exactly how much damage is happening, but regardless, Erica Torres winning the points on positioning alone and damage only acting as a bonus. Yeah, the full mount. As if Buchanan, this referee, in very close proximity, and rightfully so. I thought Ashley Buchanan might have been out for a second. You can see the signs of life from Buchanan, able to roll her way through, trying to maybe take off some of that pressure, but Erica Torres has locked right back in. Yeah, rolled with the crab ride, and now trying to settle those hooks in. Under in the rear naked choke, Ashley Buchanan with the scramble, though. Torres staying tight. At this point just has to survive, trying to beat the bell here. Break is forced. As the first round ends, Torres take us through. Absolute positional dominance out of Erica Torres throughout the entirety of this round. She dictated the pace of this entire first round. As we see right here, assuming the full mount and enjoying the fruits of her labor, settling into the with the hooks on the back, staying tight all throughout. Ashley Buchanan, nowhere to go. And still you can see that that focus, the determination of Erica Torres, Ashley Buchanan, taking this moment, the respite to clear her head. This is, it's a new round. Things could go any way as long as Buchanan does not get into her head. Yeah, Buchanan's gonna need to try a new strategy, a new perspective. She knows, she knows that that first round probably was firmly in Erica Torres' favor and saw the amount of control that Erica Torres was able to get with her lower body is, is trying to aim right for those powerful legs of Erica Torres. This is a wiser move on the part of Buchanan, more of a fencing strategy, trying to work distance. We had mentioned in the tale of the tape that the height and the the height and weight advantages are in Buchanan's faith. Utilize that reach advantage. Now the tie clinched, bring it in the knees. But Torres out the back door. Good Lord, Torres showing that power. Trying to ram, slam, and throw. Now settling in, the hook's in. Rear naked choke, Ashley Buchanan defending. You got to appreciate the, the wiliness, the moving target that Ashley Buchanan has been, just keeping her position ever so that Erica Torres isn't able to get that full lock that she wants. Now the transition's out of both. Ashley Buchanan trying to get back to a vertical base. Torres going for the arm bar. And now, Torres scooting. Crimping back and taking Buchanan off her feet. Now trying to wind around the, the legs, the lower extremities in danger, but now just raining down. Hammer blows, using the cage to her advantage is Erica Torres. That very familiar battlegrounds for Erica Torres. Head first into the cage multiple times. Ashley Buchanan's got to be seeing stars at this point, but hold on. Fired up is Ashley Buchanan showing that power, but Torres able to ground her once more. Weaving their way around, so disorienting that that can be, trying to get a sense of which way is up. Torres, the body scissors firmly cinched in, fighting for that rear naked choke. Back elbows, a bit of survival instincts kicking in for Ashley Buchanan as Torres now wrapping her legs once more, trying to get this control. Looks like the hooks are in firmly, but having a real hard time finishing the choke. Now transitions that arm bar once again. And has got to be careful. Buchanan has, oh, now full press. Using that mass advantage, but Erica Torres winds her way right out. Escape near danger there. Buchanan nearly in the full mount. Now Torres, full mount of her own. Oh, I think a strike just clipped Erica Torres, throw her off her game momentarily. That's our head snap back there. And we are seconds away from the end of this round. Ashley Buchanan at this point just has to stay alive. That armbar, she's got it. Erica Torres wrenching back. Hands clasped. 
saved by the literal bell, Ashley Buchanan weathering that storm in our second round. And that yeah. power on display from Erica Torres, so impressive. Absolutely. A much more successful defensive round for Ashley Buchanan. Was able to get out of the gate a bit more at the beginning of this round, but Erica Torres took over once again with the positional advantage. But look at that grit on display. Ashley Buchanan never saying die. And that you can see the excruciating pain etched on the face of Ashley Buchanan. And you've got to imagine in Buchanan's mind, she cannot let this go to the judges. It will not be in her favor if it goes through the end of the third round. Ashley Buchanan, if she wants to be victorious, has to end it right here, right now, Torres. Yeah, hunting for the knockout, hunting for the submission. It's going to come down to that. That's the key to victory for Ashley Buchanan. Erica Torres has the option of finishing in the third or riding this out. And she'll have an easy 30-27 potential if the, anything, if the first two rounds are any indication. Erica Torres is someone who in her first MMA fight had a TKO in the first round in, in, in not even three minutes. At this point, she's got to be wondering how Buchanan has been able to weather this storm. Absolutely. Ashley Buchanan is probably wondering the same thing. How long does this storm last? And again, wow, all the way on the shoulder. But Ashley Buchanan now, oh, driving that knee strike. Erica Torres, she's out. The flying knee. And that was the difference maker here, Torres. Like we said, the power from Erica Torres was on display. Ashley Buchanan knew she needed it. She needed to make that desperation knee. And Erica Torres, it was lights out, Johnny. Absolutely. If in our first bout, we paid homage to Mirko Prokop. Then in this bout, we paid homage to Jose Aldo. A flying knee knockout. Magnificent. And yeah, Erica Torres looking dejected. And who can blame her? She was 98% of the way there. And let's take it over to Samira to get a word with Ashley Buchanan. We're a last minute replacement here tonight. So how did you prepare so quickly for your fight? I just want to say, all you have to do is be ready and stay ready. And that's not a one-sided story. Erica had a surprise opponent, and I didn't even know I was going to be working today. I'm very, I'm very thankful to Combat Fights Limited for having me on as one of their fighters. I hope we give them another good fight in the next round. Strong words from Ashley Buchanan made one hell of an impression. Hello, this is Cheeseburger, owner and head trainer of the Worldwide Wrestling Dojo in Bristol, Pennsylvania. If you have interest in becoming a professional wrestler, feel free to reach out to our website at www.worldwidewrestlingdojo.com. Stick around and enjoy. Action continues here at Slamovich versus Blade 2 with a new face and a long way to return. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. She stands 5 foot 5, weighing in at 130 pounds from the in-between and making her CFU debut, the Unforgiven Salem. You know, Tor is in trying to get a word with Salem ahead of this matchup. I know it was Salem's CFU debut. I wanted to learn more. There is so little known about this competitor and very little that she is willing to provide. Probably the best person that would know Salem is her opponent here tonight in Notorious Mimi. And her opponent fighting out of the red corner. A Taekwondo practitioner. She stands 5'8", weighing in at 150 pounds. Fighting out of Westchester, Pennsylvania. She is wrestling's angel, the Notorious Mimi. Yeah, we got a light versus dark battle here on tap. Wrestling Angel 
Wrestling's Angel, the notorious Mimi and OG here at CFU, taking on the debuting, the Unforgiven Salem. You can see, as we said, unknown fighting style for Salem, but we do give the the experience, the height, the mass advantage in the corner of wrestling's angel, Notorious Mimi. And as we said, trained with Salem at the Monster Factory, probably has the, the best, most familiarity with Salem than anyone in the building here. Yeah, so far on paper, Notorious Mimi has the advantage in thus far every way. But Salem, those immeasurables, we're about to find out firsthand. Yeah, and Salem, from, from what I could tell, has some kind of, of a, a martial arts background. And you can see, trying to get this guillotine choke in on Notorious Mimi, beating down on the shoulders, trying to clip the proverbial wings. As you can see very literal wings on the back of the Unforgiven. Oh yeah, right, right away. Salem, very comfortable on the canvas. I don't know if that's a full Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu background, but very comfortable with submissions, as we're seeing firsthand. And that's the thing is that you can train alongside someone in a, a more controlled environment, but here inside the cage, all bets are off. And there are, I'm sure, things in Salem's arsenal that she has never taken out in a training kind of environment. Same likely can be said at this point for Notorious Mimi. On paper, the Taekwondo master, the striking expert, but just about had that Kimura. Now, Salem uncorking with the strikes. Salem and Mimi both squaring off, sizing one another up. Totally different environment here, as we said. Not the traditional pro wrestling kind of matchup that you are going to see. Using those kicks, using the strikes, and using the cage for all that it's worth here at CFU. Well done by Notorious Mimi to dictate the pace thus far. Able to take down Salem. Definitely wise to the submission game. Raining down the right elbows now. We're from inside the guard of Salem. Salem now with that mount straight to the back of the dome. But Notorious Mimi now still finding her way around. Yeah, wise to not stay put there for long. She was defenseless in that position. In a predicament now. Wait. Mimi looking to sweep. Salem not giving up position that easily. Yeah, Salem really anchoring herself and instead driving Mimi back down to the mat. Salem wise to not overextend herself. Mimi, though. Utilizing the, the mass advantage and, and that experience edge. And you think about the learning trees that Notorious Mimi has sat under. All of the experiences under her belt as well. But all could mean nothing when you're getting a kick right to the chest. Oh, nearly trying to duck out of the way. Oh, and wait. The head instead. And that arm of Salem got caught right in the break of the chain link. That could have been a huge difference maker. Now Notorious Mimi. Shots to the side of the skull. Seconds Closing left. Moments. Yeah. Starting to, just starting to break down before the bell. Stop the whirlwind. And we're seeing firsthand now the power on display of Notorious Mimi, the precision striking of Salem, driving home those kicks to the solar plexus. And there is that different make, difference maker, Torres. You saw the arm of Salem got caught, got clipped in the, the chains of the cage. And you got to wonder, if you were Notorious Mimi and you were able to execute something like that just a touch earlier in the matchup, could we be looking at a completely different scenario right now would we have even gone and gotten to the end of this first round yeah you know uh your guess is as good as mine there Alyssa. but at this point now i think notorious mimi has her bullseye set for this next round she was feeling very comfortable with that kimura in the last round and i have to wonder if she's gonna go for it again and oh. now meeting each other straight in the middle of the mat it is salem with this early aggression in the second round trying to pick up right where she had left off yeah right away grounding notorious mimi mimi not staying put though and that hammer lock to salem but salem trying to swing some elbows back forces the distance between herself and mimi Ooh. on the collarbone caught the throat of notorious mimi but mimi not staying down not staying dormant same could be said for Salem, who is rising to the occasion before being swept off her feet by Wrestling's Angel. 
Now Notorious Mimi trying to mount, but Salem staying active. Turning fire in kind, stacking up the rights in bunches. Mimi, nowhere to go. I spoke too soon. Yeah, able to shove Salem off, create that distance, and driving Salem back down to the mat, that double underhook. Grinding down on Salem. This is a dangerous place for Salem to be. She's trying to wrench at the face of Notorious Mimi. Is it enough to, to get that distance? Nearly had that elbow under the crook of the neck. Mimi adjusting positions now. Yes, yeah, Salem forced the separation, but Mimi could be looking to snap the arm. Oh, pondering, pondering the Americana and now the cross arm bar. Oh, and look at the torque on the arm, the shoulder. Salem forced to tap out. That's it. You can see how it all went down here. That throw from Notorious Mimi taking the air out of the lungs of Salem. And here was picture perfect. Yeah, all that momentum, all that torque on the arm, switch of the grip, and that did it. Here's your winner by submission, Notorious Mimi. Definitely not the way that Salem wanted to see her debut go, but lives to fight another day. Better to tap out and uh, you know save your arm. But Notorious Mimi, from a CFU original to standing tall, here at this fight night. Yeah, I gotta believe that she might be, she might have eyes peeled on our main event tonight. The winner of Masha Slamovich and Jordan Blade might be waiting Notorious Mimi in the future. There is no denying the efforts that we have seen from Notorious Mimi here at this fight night. continues here at combat fights unlimited a highly anticipated bout that match graphic made the rounds on social media and uh, really captured a lot of attention from fans all around <laughs> see from presentation alone nothing nothing to scoff at nothing to sneeze at when you have that much ink all over your body you got a pretty high tolerance for pain and a pedigree to go with it kickboxing jiu-jitsu karate you name it highly skilled competitor but can alice inc go toe to toe with the majesty of pain here tonight Two new faces to CFU, two worldwide, world-renowned talents colliding here. And her opponent fighting out of the red She is a striker, standing at six feet tall, weighing in at 175 pounds, fighting out of Catonsville, Ohio, making her CFU debut, the mother effing king, Kylan King. 
Skyline King from studying under some of the greats in the world of pro wrestling to studying karate, judo, and jujitsu before she even got started in the squared circle. We can see the breakdown here. The mass and the height advantage are going to go in the favor of Kylan King. Similar experience as far as years in the sport, but different styles. You have the kickboxing, the BJJ of the Scandina Scandinavian Dragon. But you have the strikes of Kylan King. We can find the similar ground in the kick game. Yeah, this height difference will make will make such a difference in, for Alice Inc.'s game plan. If she's able to close the distance, that might be her bout to win. But Kylan King, you now I hear that Painesville, Ohio was called Gainesville, Ohio before Kylan King showed up. And the majesty of pain making her mark and leaving a mark wherever she goes. But Alice Inc. made a left one on the thigh of Kylan King. And going right for that lower body is Alice Inc. A wise strategy when you know the strikes in the offense and you know the extension that Kylan King has over you. It only takes one from Kylan King. Those kicks are lethal. Now Alice Inc. Trying to figure out the puzzle that is the king. The mother effing king as it were. Pedals into the cravat. Now the yeah. knee strike. Inc. not staying put. Bearing down on the shoulder of the king. But quick swept off her feet. Kylan now capturing the leg of Alice Inc. Cracking some strikes. Yes, indeed. Switch to the position. Alice Inc. not staying put, though. An intimidating presence from Alice Inc., even though Kylan King stands a foot over her. There is something really gritty, something so, so scrappy and aggressive about Alice Inc. We're seeing that submission pedigree of Kylan King on display, staying cool under pressure, breaking the body scissors, and now raining down the hands. And locking the eyes, the, the focus, the fire, the determination. Stereo kicks now connecting in the center of the, the ring. I don't know who got the worst of that. Really not. At what point is it not even about making an impact as far as showing your skill to your opponent? Showing what you're made of. Iron sharpens iron. Real recognizes real here at Combat Fights Unlimited. I think now lowering her center, center of gravity, but the knee of Kylan King almost brought her back up to her feet and now sent right into the steel cage is Alice Inc. Rain it down the punishment. Yes. Multiple knees to the midsection, the monkey flip. And straight over, able to execute some offense, but Kylan King weaving right around flawlessly, seamlessly. These two are weaving around one another. As we approach the 22nd mark remaining in the first round, Kylan King God, look falling in a little like a heel hook. Yeah, looking at pop Double. out the joints. Alice Inc. is in some trouble, but that that bell to signal the end of our first round finally was right around the corner. Alice Inc. having the wherewithal to know she just had to hang on a little longer, Torres. Yeah, key words being hang on, and she did just that. Replays of our first round here. Kylan King asserting positional dominance and then raining down the right hands. But Alice Inc., incredible execution, floating right in to deliver the blows. But the King was right behind her every step of the way, each one having answers for the other's questions. Certainly each of them knowing the fight that they have in the other. These are world travelers, world world renowned competitors. But for Alice Inc., how much more is on the line knowing that you're not only making your debut for a company, but your debut in a new country? Absolutely. Might even be her first cage bout, period. That never mind an international debut of this magnitude. Manville, New Jersey, getting a treat here tonight at CFU. No doubt about that. CFU Undisputed Championship on the line later tonight. Slamovich versus Blade 2. As we can see, the strikes are flying early in the going of the second round. Yeah, mixing it up, punches and kicks, and now this breaks down to the canvas. Alice Inc. trying for that rear naked choke. Oh, geez, but dumped right down by Kylan King. Kylan King forced to shoulder the entire body of Alice Inc. 
Now, now wrenching Nelson. her off her feet. Yeah, elevated with the full Nelson. Incredible strength out of Kylan King, and well done out of Alice Inc. with the judo takedown. But look at the wherewithal of King. He knew to, to get that hold, not letting her arms and her hands be separated, making Alice Inc. work for it here, Torres. Yeah, Kylan King, real difference maker and X Factor for her is her defensive prowess. Knowing her way out of all of these submission predicaments or just finding her way out the way one would complete a puzzle. And, and lo and behold, right here we see King is back in the driver's seat, back in the advantage. This vice-like grip around the head of Alice Inc. Rolling Absolutely. all the way through. Absolutely magnificent back roll into that scissored guillotine. But Alice Inc. able to break free of the clutches. But it's King finding herself on her feet first. Able to get a, a short kick, that shin connecting, I think possibly with the shoulder of Alice Inc. Ray wow, down that. the blows. Stacking on that advantage. Hold on. Wrenched off her feet, and you can see now favoring that, that left calf was Kylan King momentarily. Snap variation of a drop toe hold, paying dividends. Alice Inc. now trying to hold on to that front chancery, but Kylan King. You don't throw over all. And again now bearing down on the shoulder, but quickly head scissored by Alice Inc. Now trying to put some, some pressure on the King, compromising that air supply, the ability to draw breath, but King still finding a way. Settles into a headlock position, raining down the rights. And wrenching on the dome of Alice Inc., rattling the skull as these two tangle here at CFU. Alice Inc. not staying put, able to slip out the back door, both combatants. And that could have been a dangerous kick. Alice Inc. able to block and now sweeping out the legs from underneath the King, the ground, the pound, but the King is able to defend herself. Powerful final minute out of Alice Inc. as we approach the 10 second mark. King keeping the hands clasped. And again, it is a save by the bell moment if Kylan King can hang on to prevent this arm bar. And that is it for our second round here, Torres. Both of these competitors have been throwing everything and then some at each other. As you see the body of Allison careening down to the mat. That's a six foot drop off the shoulders of Kylan King. Now continuing to assert the power advantage, Kylan King. Punches and kicks galore, but Inc. not staying down, not staying put. We talked about the striking prowess of both of these competitors, and you got to imagine lighting up the chest of Kylan King. But here is just so wise. Kylan King knew that if she wasn't able to lock her hands, that could have been game over in the, the final moments of the second round with that armbar from Inc. Yeah, that final minute of that round might have won Alice Inc. the round. Again, that's up to the judge's interpretation, but at the end of the day, that was a very powerful uh, final minute in that, in that round. We're going to see if Alice Inc. can keep up the momentum. Now, as we start our third round here, obviously we have an entire third round to go, but if it were to go to the judges, I mean, how do you think that they would score in what we've seen so far? I think we've got an even score right now, a round apiece for each each combatant, I think this, this is our rubber round. This will decide. Alice Inc., you can see, imparting that offense, driving the knees into the midsection, but Kylan King springing right back in. Had a tight hold of that ankle, but Alice Inc., no shortage of grit, no shortage of fury. You can sense the danger and sweeps King off her feet. King now, oh, able to, to lace her arm around the, the shoulder of Inc., a compromising position for the Scandinavian Dragon. Oh, but Doubt you can see, it. he was trying to, to get some blows into the inner thigh of Kylan King. Knows how dangerous the, the offense and the kicks are. Oh, that was a crispy right. Devastating blow to the jaw. Blocked by Alice Inc. Topples over the king, looking to commit regicide here. Raining him down. And again, searching for that arm bar from Kylan King, making her fight for it. Now Kylan with the stack. 
Oh my. Such great heights. Alice Inc. though didn't get that full impact of being shoved down by Kylan King. That force wasn't behind it. Able to recover and now ooh, connects with no actually caught. And that one connected. Kylan King has knocked out Alice Inc. Wow. Just like that. What a moment. What a third round here. As you saw, able to escape. Didn't have the, the full impact that it would have been for Alice Inc. if Kylan King's strength had been behind it. But there was so much power in the strikes. That one could have been a deal breaker, but it's caught and delivered by Kylan King. A devastating blow and the King reigns here at CFU. I think that height difference made all the difference in that knockout situation at the end there. That kick from Alice Higg, had Kylan Kink been a couple inches shorter, would have landed flush on the jaw. But in this situation, Kylan King with the haymaker of a kick knockout, an outstanding debut here at CFU. Impressive showing from Alice Inc. as well, making her U.S. debut. But Kylan King, as you said, that that extension, such a difference maker. Kylan King victorious here at Slamovich versus Blade 2. We have more action ahead of us tonight, including a defense of the CFU Undisputed Championship coming up in our main event. Bell tolls, welcoming the arrival, the return of the courageous one here to combat Fights Unlimited. And it tolls for Zidi, it tolls for her opponent tonight. Fighting out of the blue corner, accompanied by Johnny Cashmere. This woman is a boxer, standing in at five foot two, weighing in at 132 pounds, Fighting out of Albany, New York, the courageous one, Christina Marie. Christina Marie, who we have not seen at CFU since her last appearance at 2021's Rise of a Champion. A former elite power lifter, a, a street fighter known for just an uncontainable rage and power. This is a person who can lift three times her own body weight. Definitely yeah, an impressive yeah. competitor. She picked a magnificent second in the form of Johnny Cashmere, who could channel such aggression and rage into pure success. As you saw, speaking through that chain link might have been doing just that. Fighting out of the red corner, a street fighter. She stands five foot one, weighing in at 105 pounds. Fighting out of Blackwood, New Jersey, making her CFU debut, Brittany Blake. Another fresh face to combat fights unlimited in the form of Brittany Blake, who is trained under the learning tree of Drew Gulak. So skilled with that submission finish, the bad omen. You have the streets, uh, street fighting style against the boxing and MMA background of Christina Marie. Of course, we are going to give the, the height, the mass advantage to the courageous one. But there is a, a scrappiness, a determination in Brittany Blake, who again wants to impress in her debut here tonight. Yeah, this battle of, of two combat zone lineage descendants is fascinating. Johnny Cashmere on one side, Drew Gulak on the other. Interested to see what tricks 
both veterans have taught their pupils and what kind of difference we'll see it make here. Christina Marie and Brittany Blake. These are two competitors who are not strangers to one another. They've crossed paths in the uh, professional wrestling ring before in multi-person competition and in singles action earlier this year. But there, there are new factors. We have the steel cage. We have CFU rules. We have three three-minute rounds that are going to make huge differences here tonight. Yeah, one thing that professional wrestlers are often thrown off by is that rest period in between rounds. You're not used to getting that in a wrestling match. Thousand percent. I mean, you could be just moments away. We've seen it with submissions locked in and all of a sudden the bell tolls. But it also gives you the, the option of, of a respite. You get to collect yourself, but it again can also mess with your momentum. No doubt about it. Now, pros, pros and cons, advantages, disadvantages. It does allow you the option to turn the page in the playbook. Try something new. We're going to be seeing that on display from Christina Marie and Brittany Blake, two powerful all-rounders. We talk about power lifter, power and strength from Christina Marie on display. Driving down the body of Brittany Blake straight to the mat. Brittany Blake, wise to, wise to stay tight. Now not allowing Christina Marie the full extension of those powerful punches. And again, the around, yeah. And Brittany Blake now wrenching back this... Fujiwara armbar trying to get the, the, the full extension. Elbows to the back of the shoulder blade could make a big difference maker here. Oh, there's that, there's that Drew influence right there. That ability to chain submissions together. It's an art form. Looking to create a work of art here in her CFU debut is Brittany Blake, but not if Christina Marie has anything to say about it. Christina Marie more interested in the disaster pieces over the masterpieces. That's the thing, too. We talk about rage when it comes to a, a competition atmosphere. It can be a powerful tool, but it can also sincerely hinder one if the emotions get to a boiling point. Christina Marie has to be sure to channel that in the proper fashion. Absolutely. Especially in a more tactical environment like the CFU cage under, under the CFU rule set. And oh, that rage... Has to be well placed. Ten seconds left. And again, we see Chris, uh, Brittany Blake rather with that Fujiwara armbar wrenching back, doing some damage. But Christina Marie, oh, I get that lingering shot right to the midsection of Brittany Blake as we end this first round here. Torres, what did you see? My God, I don't envy the jo the jobs of our judges sitting cage side tonight because. This may have been the first 10-10 round I've seen of the day. It felt so evenly matched. Brittany Blake, wise staying tight on all of these situations, capitalizing on every positional advantage she could find. But Christina Marie never saying die, as we've no come to see from her over bouts past. The courageous one certainly lives up to her moniker, never afraid of anything, will step up to any challenge. But you could see Brittany Blake hunched over, may have been really nursing that that hammer strike to the, look like right to the sternum that Christina Marie delivered as that uh, first round was ending. We spoke some about the gaps in between the first and second round. That's also an opportunity for a t opportunity for adrenaline to dump, for you to definitely lose that momentum and lose that extra energy that you have. Let's we'll see how the, how both ladies adjust here in our second round. Certainly, and you could hear one of the seconds saying, "Keep your composure." Certainly, something to to keep in mind for for both of these competitors, but Christina Marie especially, who can let that anger possibly drive her off course if she's not too careful. And yeah, no doubt about it. A much shorter fuse on Christina Marie. Brittany Blake, you know, has been doubling up on those leg kicks. Wise caught the third one, did Christina Marie, though. And now catch him with a blow right to the... Oh, looking for that swing back fist. But now finding ourselves on the shoulders. Christina Marie, wait a second. Brittany Blake maneuvering around. Magnificent transition onto the back of Christina Marie. Brittany Blake. Brittany Blake might have that rear naked choke cinched in. But Christina Marie wise to take it down to the mat, trying to find a way to scramble out of here. If she can get one of her arms more free, 
There we, there we go. Right back to the midsection for Christina Marie, but Brittany Blake getting a, a shin up to try and block. Yeah, at this point now, Christina Marie just p piling on the punishment. Brittany Blake, though, returning fire in Kai. And that oh, howl no. of aggression. Looking to drive that knee, but a step of Enzigiri to the back of the skull from Brittany Blake. Yes, indeed, the professional wrestling, wrestling experience paying dividends. And now the shining wizard, knee right across the jaw. I'm amazed Christina Marie still reeling. Still reeling, but not out for the count. Still able to maintain her composure, still staying alive, but for how much longer? As we are just under a minute left. Uh, that's a long time in sitting in a predicament like this. Looking for a very bad omen is Brittany Blake here in the second round. It doesn't have the body position of Christina Marie exactly where she wants her. Christina Marie able to roll her way through. Blake, Blake trying to get right back to it. Trying to pry the arm out of its socket. And back again once more with feeling. Driving home those elbows. And there's these mere seconds enough for Brittany Blake to cinch in the bad omen, to make it count, to make it hurt. As we get the clacks for the 10 seconds. And Brittany Blake. She is fighting. She knows what's in store. Brittany Blake, you talk about that end of the momentum, trying over and over to lock in that bad omen, but couldn't beat the bell there, Johnny. Yeah, no doubt. Brittany Blake couldn't get the bad omen, but in terms of position points in this round, she definitely got the round. And now that fireman's carry, and then the magnificent reversal out of Brittany Blake. Wisely just sticking and moving all throughout the round. Yeah, Brittany Blake all the way in that second round. Wait a second. Taking off their gloves here, Christina Marie, Brittany Blake. Ripping off the tape, taking off the gloves. Things are, I think, heating up, getting a little more personal here, Torres. We're going to tape fist rules or something to that effect. CFU bare knuck. Keep your eyes on the CFU social media for news on this new rule set. As now, squaring up with one another, the blows are flying in this third and final round. Each hit packing that much more punch to it. Yeah, no, no cushion on this. And there's very little cushion on those gloves, but now these fists are unbridled. You are hearing the thwack of skin, those chops connecting, and Brittany Blake unleashing a flurry, but Christina Marie returning in kind. It's indeed the sweep trying to keep the position. Brittany Blake has other ideas. Blake now. Hold on. Oh, wait a second. Caught by the power of Christina Marie. Brittany Blake trying to fight for her variation of an octopus stretch. But the power of the courageous. Oh. Driving the body of Brittany Blake into the cage. And on the opposing side as well. Now dumping her to the mat. Christina Marie is using every inch of the CFU cage to her advantage here, Torres. Yes, very ill-advised octopus stretch attempt out of Brittany Blake. That may have made the whole difference in this, this entire fight, never mind the third round. Blake very slow to move. Christina Marie settled into that rear naked choke. Just needs the body scissors to complete the maneuver. Hold on. Able to bound off of the steel cage. Of course, we know there's not going to be a rope break here, but able to use the cage, bounce her feet off of it to roll through is Brittany Blake. Now both... Both establishing distance. Swing and a miss from Blake and now finds herself on the shoulders. The Samoan drop from the courageous one. Repositioning now. But trying to anchor herself against this hold. Really just frustrating Christina Marie more and more as Brittany Blake. Yeah, coming completely unglued there. At this point, not even able to decide on a submission. Oh, but that swinging back fist connected. 
the side of the skull of Christina Marie. Brittany Blake looking to drive it home. Christina Marie rolls out of the way. And the spear from the courageous one. Drove her across the, across the cage. Hooks oh, are locked in. in. Yeah. I think it's academic here. Brittany Blake, is she fading? Is she fighting? She is rolling her way through. But she's got nowhere to go. A lot of gumption on display out of Brittany Blake. I'm amazed she's still conscious. But seconds, seconds. Yes, yeah. seconds left in the third and final round here. Christina Marie, can she get Brittany Blake to tap out, or are we going to go to our judges here? That'll be yeah. it. Torres, I certainly do not envy the decision that our judges need to make tonight. As, as we take a look here at our third and final round, some heavy artillery coming out from Christina Marie and Brittany Blake in this one, Johnny. Yeah, very difficult to call this one here. I feel like the moment of the round may be right in front of us here as Brittany Blake getting rammed into both sides of the cage, but never saying die all throughout. Yeah, both ladies came uncorked with all of their best maneuvers throughout this third round. The judges got a long night ahead. Certainly a huge decision to make here. Christina Marie, the long-awaited return. We see our, our judges scoring this bout. Definitely a, a tough one. Actually, I think we've come to a decision, and now Samira is going to let us know. All right, judges, do we have our decision? Michael Collins delivering the decision here to Samira, who is going to let us know. Okay, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Travis Jacobs scores it 29-28, Blake. Killer Kelly scores the bout 29-28, Marie. Split decision. And Michael Collins scores it 29-28 for the winner by split decision, the courageous one, Christina Marie. First split decision of the day. Obviously an arduous decision for our judges to make. And I gotta believe it was that side-to-side -side cage ramming out of Christina Marie that made all the difference. And all the love being shown, we both come back. What moment in the fight did you feel like you had her? Um, I think that was the moment that I had her towards the second half of the round. But she's a tough little chick. Definitely in the beginning of third round, I definitely knew I had her because my whole head, my whole headset changed. I was going in for blood. Just didn't get the outcome of that, <laughs> but definitely went in there with everything I got. So I'd say third round was definitely the, the pick of me, for sure. Thank you so much and congratulations on your win. A huge congratulations to Christina Marie returning after years away from the cage. Only the strongest survive. Only the strongest survive. Christina Marie letting us know, and she let everybody know in attendance with victory against Brittany Blake in our semi made event.
Oh, I know I am. You and me both, Torres. It is a huge opportunity. Slamovich versus Blade 2. And the moment is now upon us. A rematch from back at Caged Combat. Jordan Blade unable to fulfill what she considered her destiny in taking that undisputed championship from Masha Slamovich. Looks to take home victory here tonight. Hey, what a second. What a second indeed, flanked by the thick daddy himself, Andy Brown, Jordan Blade, steps into the fray at Slamovich versus Blade 2. Oh my God, already with, a, with such grappling prowess and she's seconded by such a striker. Jordan Yadu. Blade. And you have to imagine too, knowing that Masha Slamovich has Julia Smokes in her corner, Jordan Blade needed someone that could talk almost just as much smack as Julia Smokes. Finds it in the form of Andy Brown, and here the submission sniper is all fired up as we can already hear Julia Smokes before Masha Slamovich even starts to make her entrance. The CFU Undisputed Championship has a second and a reputation that precedes her. First and the only, Masha Slamovich, Russian Dynamite, cut from a different cloth. Spent time on the mats with Josh Barnett, has been tested by Catch Gods. And that's the flag she fights under in our main event tonight. So much prestige around the CFU Undisputed Championship. And uh, certainly some history between our opponents here tonight as we take it over to our tail of the tape. You have the BJJ of Jordan Blade, the submission sniper. You have the catch wrestling, catch wrestling of Russian Dynamite, Masha Slamovich. It's going to be something where if we get to the mat, all bets are off. And no doubt about it, a, co a collision of different disciplines. Different disciplines, different personalities, but there is no denying. There is so much intensity between Slamovich and Blade. Train letting them know that Masha's got that dog in. And there is no denying that even if Julia Smokes hadn't been on all fours. Yeah, yeah, no argument. Okay, we went over the rules in the back. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourselves at all times. Come out fighting at the sound of the bell. Protect yourself is the message to our fighters. Masha Slamovich looking to protect her championship at all costs here tonight. A second go around in her defense against the submission sniper, Jordan Blade. Yes, indeed, Jordan Blade, her second dispute at Masha Slamovich's undisputed championship here at CFU. Made a vent. My hair is standing on end, Alyssa. No denying that. First round now kicking off. But trying to put the kibosh early on the momentum of Masha Slamovich, trying to get some of those strikes early out the gate. Jordan Blade now looking to ground her opponent, scrambling, sprawling out. Either combatant can overextend themselves. They're both very precise submission athletes. 
Garden Blade does have that mass advantage, going to try and look to overpower Masha Slamovich. But there's something to be said for the strategy. We talk about different learning trees, different experiences. Masha Slamovich spent an extensive amount of time in Japan competing. Masha Slamovich has had opportunities that Jordan Blade looks to assert for herself as well. Being able to topple over Russian Dynamite could lead to those kinds of opportunities for Jordan Blade, and that is not lost on her in this moment. CFU Undisputed Championship is a key that opens many doors. Jordan Blade well aware. I don't know who's got the better of this exchange thus far. Yeah, back into that corner. Not a whole lot of places to go. Not a whole lot of give to this cage. Trying to crack those heels into one another's rib cages. Both fighting for heel hooks, potentially ankle locks. For someone that used to be known as the ankle breaker, the submission sniper is certainly going to be looking to live up to that previous moniker. But now Masha Slamovich. Yeah, Jordan might be all tied up here. Jordan staying cool under pressure. That's how they teach you at the at Mongol BJJ. And Slamovich now trying to trying to break apart the ball that Jordan Blade has shrimped into. Searching for purchase around the body of her opponent. Finds it. Crook of the arm just under the chin. Having trouble keeping the grip. And Jordan now. Pass guard. Yeah, looking to maneuver around the lower body. Getting those elbows into the ribs of Masha Slamovich. Got that mount around the, the back. Trying to lace her ankles. Masha a hold of one ankle, not quite in danger of the triangle choke just yet. Putting that pressure on Jordan Blade as she seeks to find an escape is the champion. Jordan Blade now. Past the halfway point of our first round of our main event here. Masha looking to settle into the guillotine. Jordan not having any of it. Masha, you could see the heels almost connecting. Maybe glancing blows, but we're still connecting with the side of the face of Jordan Blade as she sought an escape. Julia Smokes telling our official to watch the hair of Masha Slamovich. As Jordan Blade looking to assert herself once more in this position of power. Raining down. Yes, indeed. Trying to keep position, Masha scrambling. Unrelenting, the body scissor. But now it's wise, Slamovich. Wise to quickly pass by Jordan's guard. Not want to stay in that position for long. And Slamovich is someone that is so used to being in the driver's seat. That is a, a obviously a place that she is going to find that confidence. Now Jordan trying to force the elbow. In what kind of opportunity she can find here grounding Slamovich now trying to isolate that arm to no avail now just trying to keep positional advantage driving the knee into the head under a minute left in our first round and again now Masha Slamovich trying to pry apart the hands of Jordan Blade using her expertise using her experience against the power of Jordan Blade. Jordan Blade, why is to not leave this to solely being the scramble? Trying to keep position for as long as possible, notch those position points. You don't want it to fall to the judges, but as we saw earlier in the evening, sometimes it ends up that way. Jordan Blade wants to make it damn sure if it gets to that point that she has got all of the points that she can rack up to her name. Don't want to see that being where it goes. Jordan Blade wants that decisive victory here tonight. Wants that satisfaction. No disputes for the undisputed champion. Can't have that. Now the end. That would have been pried off one another. Yeah, at the end of the first round, you could see Masha Slamovich first to attempt that strike. And then it really became a pretty grounded contest here in the first round, Torres. Yeah, no doubt about it. A lot of scrambling on the canvas between both combatants. 
we saw a lot of raining down strikes in between uh, grappling for positional advantage. Masha Slamovich trying for that armbar there. No submissions. Really all that threatening in the first round. We did see quite a lot of striking that may have loosened up the other. We're going to find out in the second round. You can see Slamovich already standing at attention, already ferocious, fired up, ready to, to get back in, ready to start the second round, and looking for another successful defense of her undisputed championship. I think that's just Masha Slamovich 24-7, always, always game, always ready for the for the next the next peak to summit. But Jordan. You ain't has the opportunity to summit this peak tonight. Jordan Blade walked into tonight saying this is her moment, this is her night, and has been putting in so much work. Had a CFU sanctioned match, fatal combat against Edith Surreal, continues to, to push herself, show so much drive, wants to keep improving herself. You see on social media constantly working in the gym, whereas Slamovich on the opposite side, constantly traveling, constantly competing. All of these different experiences that have sharpened Slamovich as a competitor doubt about it these two warriors at this point we're seeing the sharpest from both on display we see them simultaneous locks on one another it looks like jordan the first to untangle settling into a referee's position of her own drives in the cross face strike and now racking up the points with the positional advantage As I said before, not looking to end it by a point. But prepared if it should come to that. And as we do see here too, it is three five-minute rounds as opposed to our initial matches, three three-minute rounds. We have a, a two minutes. So much can happen, so much damage that one can endure over the course of those two extra minutes in these rounds. Now an additional two minutes of rounds, you know, to, to the lay person, it may not seem like all that much, but just add it up. An additional six minutes of unbridled warfare. Especially when you consider combatants like this. It's exactly what you're going to get. So much on the line with the CFU championship. Yeah, and both ladies with gas tanks for days. You know, the extra six minutes, you know, would be daunting for other combatants, but potentially not these two. I think, too, when you think of the full heads of steam that they both came into in this matchup. Seconds with keen eyes on the competition. Julia Smokes having to take the hat off. Sweat. Getting hot under the collar. Yeah, we're cooking here in Manville. Main event action on display. Again, Jordan Blade now just trying to rack her brain, trying to see what it's going to take. Can she just keep bearing down on Slamovich? Wait a second. I'm looking for maybe a gut wrench, but instead driving those elbows into the side of Masha Slamovich. Sometimes just that surprise shift of balance. They might, might have thrown off Masha, now Jordan able to capitalize. Certainly can be disorienting as now Russian Dynamite being ground into the mat compromising position but looking to impart some damage of her own to force some separation yeah, yes indeed both being contorted into pretzels i don't know who's getting the worst of it jordan blade forced to relinquish the hold that she had and now masha with the with the ankle on this may the, her ability to shift submissions like this may make all the difference oh and you see the heels of slamovich coming down on the hip the side of Jordan Blade. Jordan trying to find her way out. He for the lock. Trying to, to roll, trying to get that more favorable position, relieve some of that pressure. But Slamovich is right on top, barreling over Jordan Blade. It's a little bit quicker to her feet was Masha. Bowled over Jordan. Under a minute left in our second round. Haymaker shots from the champion as Jordan Blade now floating back over into a favorable position, looking to separate the arms, trying for this arm bar. Lamovich not letting her have it. 
Basha trying to posture up now. Jordan undeterred, keeping that grip. But Masha, one of her own now. Trying for it, Jordan Blade knowing if Masha separates her hands, it could be lights out, it could be game over, it could be another unsuccessful challenge. And she hold on, 15 seconds left. This point, you waiting out the clock, you hear that clack, you know that possible relief, if you can just hold on, can she do it? Having, again, to be physically separated from one another, it just proves more and more what is on the line here in this main event. As you saw, again, early strikes caught from Jordan Blade and Slamovich sent spiraling down to the mat. Yeah, another a difficult round to call in this case. Very back and forth. Each one having the answers for one another. You saw trying for that arm bar, but then straight into that transition, Masha was looking for one of her own. A couple of those heel strikes. I got to wonder if Masha got the better of that round. Slamovich certainly standing at the ready. Knows this is the final round, knows this is the final opportunity before it could potentially go to our judges. Seconds are taking a, some shots at one another verbally, Andy Brown and Julia Smokes. Yeah, we might, have, we, we might have a special encore fight if that continues. You just never know here at CFU as we prepare our final round. Competitors meeting in the center of the cage. Lamovich dumped over by Jordan Blade who drives that knee. Hold on, hold on, wow. Lamovich is out, Jordan Blade. In the first seconds of our final round. Jordan Blade. Unbelievable moment, Jordan Blade. Whoa, whoa. I think you may have had a prediction there, Torres. <laughs> I didn't mean to speak that into existence. Pandemonium erupting in the cage here at Slamovich versus Blade 2 here in our fight night. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to be the undisputed championship coronation that Jordan Blade had in mind. Blade said she was looking to fulfill her destiny here tonight. I don't know if this is exactly what she had pictured, but tensions at an all-time high here as... Julia Smokes and the former champion, Masha Slamovich, are escorted out of the cage. Yeah, Julia Smokes might have been wise. Andy Brown's not afraid to hit him. He'll do it. Certainly no denying that. Visibly shaken, visibly disturbed. But there is no putting it past Jordan Blade standing victorious holding aloft the CFU championship that she has been on that mission for, stands your new CFU undisputed champion. The tempers that flared at the end of our main event there, I'm not sure if this war is completely over, but we can rest assured that the battle was won by Jordan Blade, your second ever Combat Fights Unlimited undisputed champion, long live the submission sniper. Thank you once again for joining us at Combat Fights Unlimited. For Johnny Torres, I'm Alyssa Marino. Let's take it back to Samira. Well,